as Justin just said, I'm the organizer of Ruby Burger, which is a delicious meetup. But uh, really what it's about is just uh, some talks between Rubyists and that's it. You, you go, you eat a burger and you share with your friends. No talks needed. And in Belgium, it looks more like a Ruby beer meetup. You just go and grab beers with friends because at the beginning it's a burger and you end at 2, two o'clock with beer. Uh, for the moment, I just started working at Eroku. I've been there for two weeks, so I'm pretty new and I can't say much more for the moment. And uh, this talk will be about PostgreSQL uh, and why you should give him some love. Uh, you can take everything from this talk and apply it to your database. What I really want you to think about is that it's just not a data store. Your database is not a data store. If you want simply a bucket and fill it with data, grab something else. I don't know. Don't do that, please. It has features, and you have to use them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's a relational database, not like the new NoSQL movement. And it's also web scale. Yeah, really. It's written in JavaScript. At least the next version will be. And uh, it's open source. So if you want to participate, if you're front-end developers doing JavaScript, you can maybe do the psql command line tools in JavaScript. No, just kidding. Uh, it's in C. And uh, <laughs> so you can fill bugs, participate, and try to make that database the database you like. And uh, it's a match. It's a, yeah, it has a great community. Sorry, I see the next slide. I'm not used to that. Uh, I will just move it away so I forget about it. So it has a great community. At the beginning, it was more an academic tool, but now more and more companies start using it. There are great support team. You can buy support and just... It's really great. <laughs> uh, why does not switch? So it's a mature technology. It, uh, it has its roots in the 80s. A uh, large company use it, and uh, stuff like Instagram is relying on that. So yeah, it's web scale. I say it again. And it will also do your coffee. Just kidding. But there is maybe an extension for that, but I prefer to tell you to tell a Chemex for that or some uh, AeroPress on a good expression machine or ask your barista. Uh, I will take this uh, talk in three parts. There will be a part about how PostgreSQL can make better models for you, how it can make better queries for you, and the last part is the queries you made sometimes become slow and you have to turn them fast. If I have time, there is a small part about tools, but we'll see. So models. You, not, you don't have to have integers, sequ sequential integers as keys. For example, Instagram used something totally custom, made out of the different database IDs, timestamps, a, a small sequential uh, integer, and that way it creates a, a, a different ID than just one, two, three. Uh, you, if you use something like UUID that is already in Postgres, your marketing team will be happy when you're not sharing the number of users or number of posts or number of something you do. Because if your API just expose your IDs, they know how many users you have. And it was a problem with our last app, so we switched to UUID. And also, it's standardized. OK, it's bigger than an, an integer. But at least, it's, it can be used like a, some kind of permalink. And you, you feel less guilty about exposing a UUID in your API than an ID that is sequential one. It will use more space also. So how oh, you use that with Rails, it's as easy as that. You create the extension. Uh, a lot of the stuff I will show are just extension you have to activate before you can use them. And you specify that the ID is a UUID. And that way, every time you create a new user, you get that wonderful long ID instead of a sequential one. What you can do also is uh, add columns without migration. Somebody will tell you that it's wrong, you have to have a normalized database. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> I really don't care. 
for the moment, uh, or on the la last app I worked on, uh, the, the project manager came every week like saying, you need that new settings, you need that new avatar size. The, the iPhone 6 is coming, you will need bigger avatars. So, are the columns for that or something else? From my, from my point of view, you can just use HStore, which is some kind of key value store with just strings for key and values. And uh, so if you want booleans and dates, you just use convention and a small overlay of macros that just will translate them and convert them to the actual type. In Rails, it's as easy as always adding a column with a type hstore. You can use store accessor to expose them as methods quickly. And, uh, but for things like uh, avatars, it will expose user.large. And uh, I'm really not a fan of that, so I created some small macros just wrapping store accessor and exposing avatar underscore large or avatars medium and stuff like that. What you can do also for your models is caching the API results. Uh, using Postgres as a cache can seem a little bit odd, but we had some example that at some point we had to download uh, Twitter authentication. And for that, at first time, the project manager say, you will need the, the token and the username. We store that in the table. Two weeks after, he comes back again and say, yeah, but maybe we'll add a profile to our site, so let's grab the description avatars from Twitter. And then you're screwed because you don't have the payload again. And you can do some migration and fetch them all again. If you have like 10 users, it will work. Twitter will be happy, but if you have thousands, thousands of users, Twitter will just throw you away. So you can use JSON in your database. Uh, it's like the best of both worlds. You have uh, a little bit of Mongo, a little bit of Postgres. And uh, for the moment, it's just like strings. It's stored like strings, and you have manipulation function and extraction out of that strings. But with 9.4 that is coming in the next few months, I think, there will be a binary format, and that way everything will be optimized, and it will be a, a proper type, and can maybe also replace the edge store as it's as the types, so you will not have to have that small layer in your models. And uh, it's always as easy as adding a simple column with a type, and uh, you can have in-place modification of the JSON now, and it will work right away. You save it to the database, and that works. Everything is fine. And what happens for me is I just expose some methods of out of the, the JSON. So like the description, I have user.description, it's just fetch in the JSON at the first time. And if I need to query on that field, instead of having it in the database and asking the JSON, I just extract it to a new column and fetch everything with that. So it, you can have better indexes than the one using for JSON that are a little bit slower than actual simple string column, for example. So just to wrap it up quickly, uh, for the models, you have UUID, so it's free permalinks. Edge store, it's some kind of key value store in your, uh, in your Postgres, which is really useful. And JSON, which is caching everything, and MongoDB for your database. It's about that, not really. It's just a little joke, but yeah. <laughs> so next, uh, what can Postgres do for your queries? Actually, uh, you start having that really awful queries when you multiple join itself. You, you join the same table over and over, like for friends of friends of friends of friends. And at some point, you just get lost. Your queries and just the impossible to understand again. You add docs, but two weeks after, even the docs doesn't help. So what you can do is just use common table expression, which are actually extracting some part of the queries uh, on top of the actual queries to name things. So you will have something like friends of friends. You can extract it and have with your act the, the query part about users and as friends of friends and use friends of friends in your query. It's great for naming things. It's really, really beautiful to read after that. But 
one drawback is that it can be unoptimized by the PostgreSQL. And then it can be slower sometimes. Not all the time, but that can happen. So be warned. But I prefer to have something I can read and understand than something that is really, really fast. If it needs to be really, really fast, I will rewrite it again two weeks after or two months after. We'll see. So it's as easy as that. Yes, uh, write SQL in my Ruby. I like that. Uh, I find it more comprehensible than having a uh, where closed chain and if statement that just grabs stuff and modifies some part of the queries. Uh, so here you see the, the with bad users as select something from user where bad equal true. After that, you can just query with bad user and use user find by SQL, and you get all the user you want there. At that point, if it's still too slow, because sometimes it happens to you, we, we had the case that uh, we had to fetch popular posts. So my, my last company was a company doing selfies. And uh, <laughs> we, we had to fetch popular posts. But people used uh, their network to be popular with every post. So you just see the same face over and over. And at some point, the, the project manager told me, yeah, we need to do something about that. We need to limit to max three posts per day per user. A and that query took a very long time to compute, something like eight seconds or that's not manageable. You can cache it and everything. So I have uh, a strange way to cache stuff with PostgreSQL di directly is that I use views. Uh, for tools who don't know what views are, it's just uh, it's like the common table expression, but stored in your database. So you say, uh, I have to store that query, and that query refer to that name. So let's say the, the bad user example, we have create a view, at bad user as something, something. And you can use bad user di directly. But before materialize view, it was just uh, the, the, the content was not stored. So with materialize view, you just duplicate the data into a temporary view that you can index. So at the end, you query it, and it passes from eight seconds to a few milliseconds. Uh, the point is that with popular post, we could manage that it's not real time. So I use it for a lot of non-real-time stuff and just exposing it with read-only models in Rails. In uh, 9.4, you could also update them concurrently. For the moment, you have to do a, a little trick like uh, creating a new view, dropping the first one, renaming the, the new one to not block the view. But it works great, and uh, our users are happy, and the project manager too not showing all the same face over and over. So it's just like that. You create materialized view. And uh, after that, uh, if you follow Rails convention, you can just create a model uh, yeah, in a directly from user. So I have all the stuff I had on user that works also on bad users. I don't know why I used bad users. Maybe some the people that just post too many post of themselves. What you can also do for your queries is instead of directly adding a, a new dependency like Elasticsearch, you can do full text search directly on PostgreSQL with a few set of stuff. Uh, a lot of the things you do in your job are probably search when you do a web app. The point is to go into the data, like uh, finding the that tags, all the post linked to that tags all the blog posts with Batman and Robin, or Batman and not Robin, stuff like that. Finding users. You like to find users by email, so you can contact them over and over, like on LinkedIn. Uh, it's, so everything is about that. And the full text search works with a few functions. And what it does really is when you index uh, a model, it decompose. Uh, it's split the, the string into a normalized vector of words. So you have all the words in lowercase instead of having just the string. And that way, you can use a, a, a special function to make a query against it. And uh, the beautiful thing is that 
you create that index in a specific language, so you can find plurals, uh, probably uh, also uh, verbs. Uh, if you use uh, is or are, it will find it. And uh, for that, I used Textacular, which uh, had a better name before. It was called Textical. Yeah, Textical, please. Uh, and so it just exposed all the, uh, the composition of function and extraction in simple function in Ruby. Like the first one, just search on all the text fields of your the model about me. Uh, the second one, you, you can just specify some fields and just search for everyone that starts like Jan. Or you can use a fuzzy search, which is more using something called trigrams, which are uh, decomposition of words in three letters, so you can match uh, close words instead of just the word. And then you create, like I said, the, the, a special index that decomposes the, the text field into English words normalized. So if you forget the, the index, you're screwed. I assure you, it's really slow without the index. What you can do, though, for the queries, Having uh, extraction of a sub naming, uh, a sub query and naming it, extracting that slow queries into a temporary view that you refresh every time you need, or full text search. So you can always do most of the thing when you're prototyping in PostgreSQL with toasting without adding external dependencies directly. It can wait. Elasticsearch, if your full text search is too slow, just add it, because if you just do search all the time, add it. But at the beginning, it, you can just prototype without it. So now, for the speed, what can we do for the speed? We can add indexes. So I will not go into the type of indexes. I know there is B3, Gin, GIST, and stuff like that. But I just understand the B3 and the Gin part, which are actually some kind of binary search, and the other one is inverse search about words to find the correct one. So that, that is the part I, I don't manage well, so I won't talk about that. And it's not necessary. Most of the time, you will use B3, and if it's text search, you will use Gene. That's all I remember. So what you can do is index more than one column. I, Rails automatically creates uh, indexes for your primary keys and your foreign keys, but you can index more than one column. It can be useful. Let's say you always query on A and B, create an index on A and B. And if you query on A also, that index will work too. So le let's say you, you always try to find the posts that are not banned because banned posts are bad for user. Nobody wants to see boobs and everything on, on your app. And post it by that people. Uh, you just create uh, an index on band post and poster ID. If you query on band only, it will use the same index. That's one of the advantages of the multi-column index. It takes more space, of course, than a single column index, but it works pretty well. We, we had some major improvements in, your, in our app with uh, multi-column index. You can also create just a part of the rows. Uh, our previous example, actually, if you never query on only a band post, you can just create an, a, f uh, a partial index that are focus on a subpart. Let's say you soft delete your stuff in your, your user base because you don't want to lose user data. So you just have to delete that column. And if it's not nil, you know it has been deleted. And you don't want to see it in search and everything. So for that, I still use the band thing here. But you could create uh, an index on user ID where deleted at is nil. And at that moment, you know, you just query the subpart of your user that are not deleted. Same here. The, that example will be faster with this kind of index than the previous one if you have a lot of banned posts, because you quickly dismiss like half of them, or I don't know. People just create selfies and destroy them right away because they look ugly. And what you can do also, and that one is my favorite index, is uh, you can transform. You don't have to add an index on a column. 
you can transform that column before indexing it. It's really useful for uh, case insensitive search and all that. So instead of just having a, a normalized version of your, your username, you just, before that, you just transform it. Like here, you lowercase the email. And so when you do a search, it will directly hit the lowercase version and it will be really faster than computing it afterwards. Uh, I don't know how you can do it, even without uh, lower casing it before. So we had partial indexes, which just uh, subparts of your rows. Multicolon indexes, which are querying always the same fields over and over, just index, uh, index them together. And functional one, which transform your data before you save them. Uh, actually, the full text search uh, index we saw was a functional index is because you just transform the colon of the, your blog post content to a series of words. So that part is just a transformation. We have time apparently to do a little bit more tools now. So there are really great tooling in PostgreSQL that can help you have insight on your database, on how you use it, and also how to share data with people around without creating a new view every time. Uh, f the question people will probably have, no, I don't use a GUI. I use PSQL. I have a PSQL RC file that just make it clean and nice. It's really enough for a database. So first thing, you. Your marketing guys uh, wants you to get the list of the active user of the last two months. You know you have that information in your database, and you just need to extract it and send, it, send him the numbers. At that moment, you can just go to PSQL, type the query, copy past the results, send him by email, and he's happy. But two weeks after, he come back and, yeah, and what are the numbers now? So for that stuff, the, there is tools like Data Clips on Heroku, which are really great. Uh, if you're using Postgres on Heroku, you can use that tool. If you're not using Postgres, sorry for uh, Postgres on Heroku, sorry for you. Uh, but there is also PGPin, which is an open source Go clone of Data Clips that work great and that will work on your data too. So. Uh, for that part, also what is, what is really great, and I don't know if you can read it here, but I also made a, a small tool for when I was onboarding at Heroku that just extract data of data clips and put them in Librato. So you can also use this kind of read-only tools to get uh, metrics directly in graphs. And so it's pretty useful, really. Uh, I use them all the time. And uh, your marketing guy will be happy to not email you again about something you already answered. And you will be happy too because you can just not respond to it or just send in the, li the link or go back to your old mails. So PostgreSQL also has a, a super table called PG Stat Statements, uh, which is actually uh, a table that collects every piece of information about your queries. So you, you will get some average time, some the time it took for that query. It doesn't add the query totally. It just uh, normalize it, remove the parameters, and store it that way. So you can quickly, with simple queries like that, uh, get the average time of the uh, 100 slower request, or the total time of them. And you can get a lot of this information. And with the simple transformation you can also do, you can find mean time instead of average time if you need it, or everything else. Uh, percentile are maybe harder to compute directly for the moment, but uh, normally uh, in 9.4 there are new function to give you more easiness to compute them. And also, yeah, it seems like the tools are most uh, on error coup, but uh, uh, the, the Postgres team just introduced uh, a view that shows you directly the, the data pre-computed out of that table. So you can quickly see what's slow, what's fast, what is the s uh, slowest I.O. stuff, and all that in your browser. So you can directly act on it and change stuff. 
and made it fast. Because that's all you need. You don't want small, uh, s uh, slow queries. If it's still not enough, you add indexes, everything is still slow. Maybe you have a problem with your database engine directly, configuration or something. You, you open too many connections or you just have a cache sheet that is too slow. You don't have enough cache, so it must all the time rewrite the cache in memory. Write and write and write. And for that, there is a, an open source tool called PG Diagnose that will give you the index usage, cache it, the load of your Postgres instance, connection number. And actually, if you look inside the code, it's just uh, SQL queries, really, really, really complex one, like 20, 30 more lines. It's really hard to read, but all the information is actually stored inside different tables inside Postgres. So Postgres keeps tracks of everything for you. And if you know where to search, you, you will find just the piece of information you need to make it fast and resolve your problems, if it's for a query or for the database. So quick recap, Data Clips, your manager uh, needs information, you just share something that is readily. You, you just go to PG stat statements to see if it's fast, what is slow, and the uh, global usage of the database, so you just pick on the other table or use a tool that will do it for you because those queries are just unreadable. And so now, uh, to wrap it up, uh, you know that PostgreSQL is made of unicorns and rainbows. Not really, but actually, I just want you to know that it's better than a data store. If you just want a bucket uh, full of something, go to KFC and grab a bucket of chicken, not a data store, please. And treat your database well, because uh, a lot of Rails developers for the moment still forget to include foreign keys and stuff like that, which are really mandatory for your database to stay in a good shape. In the future, maybe you will drop Rails, use another tool to attack the database, but your data, what, you, what is the most valuable for you, if you lose it or corrupt it, you're screwed. So please, treat your data gently. And that's it. Thank you.